In this episode, we'll take a look at the Audient Evo 4 audio interface. Now, this is from the perspective of a podcaster or voiceover artist, not so much for the perspective of musicians. So if you're a musician, I don't want to waste your time. Just warn you now, we're not going to cover any recording of instruments or singing. So first of all, an audio interface, like the Evo 4, is a device that you connect to your computer via USB. And what it allows you to do is play back sound from your computer, either to headphones, or you'll notice here to powered speakers, which we have balanced line outputs here to feed to powered speakers. And you can also, of course, record. You'll notice there are two inputs here with XLR combination jacks, and there's also a instrument direct input on the front. Now, the question you might ask is, well, I can do that already with my computer, can I? I can just use a USB microphone, and it's already got a headphone jack, so why do I need something like this? Well, the idea here is that you can use XLR-based microphones, which are professional-level microphones in most cases. So you're gonna be able to get some higher quality audio, potentially. Another thing to keep in mind is that most computers have somewhat mediocre circuitry within them for their audio. So the headphone amp is usually, if on the higher end computers, okay, but not amazing. And in terms of microphone inputs, it's usually just a headset input. So it's really not made for bringing in professional grade microphones. What you do not have on your computer in most cases are line level balanced outputs for your powered monitors or speakers. So if you're trying to do a lot of editing and you're really focusing on audio, generally an audio interface is gonna have better audio processing capabilities and it also provides balanced line level outputs for your professional grade studio monitors. Also the headphone jack on most audio interfaces is usually higher quality. And in the case of the Evo 4, we'll see here, it's actually surprisingly good quality. And if you are recording with an instrument, you can go into the DI input here on the front and record directly to the computer. So let's take a closer look at the Evo 4 in particular. So first of all, the build quality. Number one, this is made out of a plastic. In fact, it's 100% plastic from what I can tell. And it is a kind of an interesting plastic. If you're familiar with the Zoom H6, it feels like it's that same material, which is kind of a nice, it's a nicer type of plastic. It has a little bit of give to it, but not a lot, and it gives in a way that seems to inspire confidence. That is to say that if you dropped it, it feels like it would probably sustain that impact pretty well. So while it is 100% plastic, it seems like fairly high quality plastic. The buttons click, they're nothing spectacular and they're nothing awful, so they get the job done. One thing I really very much appreciate is the knob here on the front. So here, for example, is my headphone volume. It's really nice just to be able to roll that back and forth. The 19 LEDs around the big knob serve a variety of purposes. As you can see here, first of all, it's our meter. And so as we're looking at our input levels and just making sure that we're not clipping all the way up here to the top, it gives us a nice kind of a clear view of where we're at overall. Now, it's kind of nice from the standpoint that there are so many different LEDs. A lot of times on smaller interfaces like this, especially at this price point, you're gonna get a meter that maybe has two or three segments, <laughs> maybe five segments, but this has got a full 19, so that's nice. The only problem is, of course, because it is a dual purpose, these LEDs serve dual purposes, it doesn't mark what you're actually peeking at. So for example, I'm not sure I'm peeking somewhere around here. I don't know what that translates to in terms of dB full scale. All I know is that this is clipping up here. So while it's nice that you get a lot of resolution, the downside is you don't have an exact measure of where you're at in terms of dB full scale. I find this is workable, definitely for the price. This is better than most meters I've seen on similarly priced audio interfaces. In terms of making the settings, so for example here, if I'm gonna set my headphone volume, I really like that it has a, it has a nice range. And again, the control is very nice as well. So overall, nicely implemented. This is a dial that has no stop. You can spin it forever. <laughs> But again, because you have a fair amount of resolution, it's pretty nice to work with. There is a very interesting smart gain mode. One of the things that beginners struggle with is, well, where should I set my input level? And so here, for example, right now, we have it set to right there, whatever that means. <laughs> That's another thing, again, when I'm setting the input level, I don't know how many decibels of gain I've set it to, I just know that it's that dot right there, not all the way to the top with this particular condenser microphone. Now, the one thing that's nice about this is, you don't get caught up in the numbers. 
But on the flip side, you also don't know exactly where you're at. So it can be a little bit more difficult to replicate that. Although, again, if you set it to the same level each time, I know I have to go to that dot with this particular microphone in this particular situation with my particular voice, so on and so forth. That's still workable. But if you're not really comfortable and you don't really know how to set your gain level, there's a really interesting feature called Smart Gain, where you basically press the Smart Gain button. It then flashes the two different input buttons here. You press the input button, or maybe both of them if you want to set the levels on both of them. Then you start either talking or playing your instrument or whatever you're going to do. And I recommend, for example, with talking, if there's any chance you're going to laugh, that you do a laugh as well. And for a few seconds, it will flash while it's figuring out the levels that are appropriate given the input you're sending over the microphone. So that's a really nice feature that makes it a lot easier for those that are getting started. And it kind of works as a teaching tool as well, because once you're done setting the gain, you just press the button and it shows you exactly what it shows. In fact, in this case here, for example, I let it set up with smart gain, and this is where it put it. When people are buying their first audio interface, one thing they don't generally take into account is what's the quality of the headphone amplifier? And I have good news here. This one is actually very good. So the test for whether or not it's a good headphone amplifier is whether or not it can drive higher impedance headphones. Those are going to be higher quality, more expensive headphones in most cases. So here, for example, I have a pair of Bayer Dynamic DT880 Pros. These are rated at 250 ohms, and the Evo 4 is able to drive it beautifully. That is to say, I can get plenty of volume in these headphones. Now, with more consumer-oriented headphones, they're usually going to have a lower ohm rating, and this can certainly drive those without any problem at all, without even breaking a sweat. Furthermore, to really put it to the test, we also put the Sennheiser HD 820s into the headphone jack and tested those, and these are rated at 300 ohms. So these are really kind of audiophile-type headphones, um, and it drove them just fine as well. I only had to use about half, maybe two-thirds of the audio range to get a really good strong signal at a very comfortable level. One thing that can be a challenge for those that are first getting started using something like the Evo 4, if you're going to be doing maybe product or software demonstrations and you want to be able to record your computer audio and a microphone at the same time, one thing that's really nice about the Evo 4 is it comes with some software that allows you to loop back the audio. That is to say, you can record both your computer audio and a microphone at the same time. So really nice that they included that in the overall package. And another thing is that whenever you're talking about a USB audio interface or any sort of audio interface to a computer, there is always a question of how much latency there is. That is to say, when you record your microphone, it takes the audio from your microphone, it brings it in, it amplifies it, that's what the preamplifier does, and then it converts it from analog to digital, and it sends it via USB to your computer, and then your computer has to send it back and then it converts it back to analog, plays it out the headphone amp or the line outputs, and then you hear it. And there's some latency involved there. There's some time it takes for all that to happen. And the question is, how much time does it take? The good news in the case of the Evo 4, we measured with Apple Logic, and it came out where the output was 3.7 milliseconds and the full round trip, that is to say, again, going from the microphone all the way to the computer, all the way back, came back at 12.4 milliseconds when the IO buffer was set to 128 samples. And just for the background information, I've been using an iMac Pro to make those measurements. So that should give you a little bit of a sense for what kind of latency you're looking at. I think overall, that's going to work pretty well for most of us under most circumstances. Now, one other thing to take into account there is that if you are experiencing a little bit more latency, one thing that the Evo 4 has on it is the ability to choose how much of the computer audio you're hearing and how much of the direct microphone input you're hearing. So when you have it set all the way over to here, you're just hearing the direct mic inputs. When you have it set all the way over here, you're hearing just the computer. And you can do a mix of both of them if you need to do that as well. Where this might come in handy in particular is that if you're playing back something from your computer and overdub recording on top of that at the same time, now you can hear a little bit of what's coming from the computer and a little bit of what you are actually recording with your microphone at the same time. Really cool that you get to choose exactly how much of each you're going to hear. Now, how did the microphone inputs do in terms of overall self-noise? It's a really important question because a lot of times people working with their very first audio interface and maybe a budget microphone are dismayed to find that they're getting a lot of hiss in their recording. That hiss is self-noise. That is to say, it's noise that's created in the electronic circuitry of their microphone and or audio interface. So to measure that on the Evo 4, we used a 150 ohm resistor in an XLR dummy connector 
And what we did is we plugged that right in to the input here. We bumped the input all the way to plus 50 dB, which is its max setting. And then from there, we measured a recording to see how much noise it was producing. And the great news is that it was producing very, very little self noise. In fact, it came in at minus 87 dB RMS. Again, that's with the input level set to plus 50, which is its max level. And again, using this 150 ohm resistor. Now you might ask, why are we using this? Well, here's the thing. This essentially simulates a dynamic microphone. And a dynamic microphone, those actually tend to be some of the more quiet microphones. So the good news is, is that if you're getting any sort of hiss in your recording, it's probably not the Evo 4 that you're hearing. That's an extraordinarily good result as far as especially budget audio interfaces are concerned. Really, really impressed with how clean the Evo 4 inputs are. The great thing is that it is bus powered, so you can plug it into your computer and the computer powers it via USB. We did also do some RF interference tests. That is to say, would a wireless phone, mobile phone, create any sort of interference in the recordings? And in my tests, I was surprised to find that it didn't. It basically, I could put the phone right next to the Evo 4 and we didn't have any problems. The only way I was able to get any sort of RF interference was to make a phone call and place the phone right on top of the XLR cable coming into the Evo 4. <laughs> and that was the only way I was able to get any sort of interference. So really good result there and really happy with the overall performance of the Evo 4. Are there any downsides to the Evo 4? Well, there are some things to consider. Number one, if you're gonna be using a dynamic microphone, here for example is a Shure SM7B. Dynamic microphone that requires a lot of gain. Plus 50 dB, will probably be okay if you're recording, but if you're live streaming, plus 50 dB may not be enough amplification to get a good strong signal for the live stream. So in that case, you probably will need a cloud lifter or a FET head, which are essentially preamplifiers that you plug into the microphone and then plug it into the audio interface, and it gives you some additional gain. Here we are working with a couple of dynamic microphones. I'm on the Shure SM7B and Emma is on the Electrovoice RE20. Excellent, and you can see that both of these are coming here into the Evo 4. And in fact, you can see that as I have the gain set to 100% on the Shure SM7B, we're still only peaking at maybe halfway. <laughs> so on the Evo 4, you have a gain range of 58 decibels, but you can apply a maximum amount of gain of plus 50 dB. So that's gonna be a little on the light side for dynamic microphones like these two here. So let's have a, just a quick conversation. You can hear what it sounds like directly out of the recording that we're making here. So the Evo 4 is running into my iMac, and on my iMac we are recording in Adobe Audition. So first of all, Emma, you are taking uh, your university student in music, and you're taking a course called Concert Attendance? That's right. It's making sure that we uh, busy music students get enough live music in our lives. Okay, great. And what... What are the requirements of the course? How is it graded? And what are your impressions? Um, it's essentially, it takes you through attendance of 14 concerts. And actually only seven of those are what most people would think of as concerts, where you go see pro musicians outside of school. Um, seven of them. The one other thing that people might identify as a downside is the fact that the build is overall plastic. Now, Again, as I mentioned, it's made out of the same sort of plastic that we saw on the Zoom H6 and I think the Zoom H5, and it's pretty good plastic. I think it'll do okay, but it is indeed plastic. So if that's a big concern for you, just wanted to make sure you knew that. So overall, there's a look at the Evo 4 from Audient. I am really impressed with what I see. For a $129 at the time of this review, seems like a really good buy. The performance is good. You'll just want to be a little bit careful if you are going to be driving dynamic microphones. You may want to get a cloud lifter to go with it, or you might want to look at another interface that maybe costs a little bit more that provides more gain. But again, the preamplifier performance in terms of self-noise is really good on this. So if you're going to be using condenser microphones like this, you should have no problems whatsoever. It can provide plenty of gain in those circumstances. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, Make sure you do that, and we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Bye.